Hello, subscribers! The time has come where I will finally be reviewing animes, officially. But for any of you who've seen my videos where I rate every anime I've ever seen, you'll know that I'm not too great at going into details. I will not be as articulate as other reviewers out there who would explain nuances about character development and good and bad writing and so on and so forth. So I have to take a different tact if I want to do this. So I made a list. When I go through an anime, at the very least, if I can't say anything about it, I will at least be able to critique it for the different types of transgressions it will have in it. And this entire video will be explaining my process and explaining how this list works, because some of it does need explaining. All right, let's begin. <laughs> So first off, violence was the most difficult one to figure out. Because how much violence is too much violence and how, how do you categorize it? I wanted this list to be objective. I wanted some sort of objective standard on which to rate and review all these animes. So how do I objectively categorize violence? Well, perhaps brutality? But then it just begs the question, how do I categorize brutality? Do I just, do I just ask how many punches are thrown in the anime? That would be super annoying to try and actually count all those. And it would also make One Piece the most violent anime ever. <laughs> And that just doesn't work. So first, I decided to categorize violence with how much it encourages violence. So first we have the yes category. That, that just basically says, yes, it has violence. And by the way, most of these are in three different levels. There you go. First, second, and third level. So most often, the first level will be easiest to uh, forgive, and the third level might be more difficult, depending on the category. Some categories chain up. Like, if I if I highlighted the third category in violence, the first category will always be highlighted. It's just guaranteed. But some of these, you could have the third one highlighted without having anything before it highlighted. But anyway. On the violence. First category, just yes. Level one, just yes, there is violence, plain and simple. Second, level two is unbalanced pacifism. And to explain that, I should explain what balanced pacifism looks like. Balanced pacifism would be like Trigun, or Batman maybe, if you don't know Trigun, where the character refuses to kill, but he doesn't refuse to fight. He has strong convictions that lead him in a semi-pacifist type way, but he's not afraid to do what he has to. Unbalanced pacifism would be a more flighty pacifism. They don't have strong convictions and they end up looking weak and making the pacif pacifist position look like an evil position or a wrong position. I'll try to give examples for most of these, but not this one, because the first anime I plan to review will actually be in this category, so hopefully I can explain it better during that, but I don't want to spoil it. And level three is way of life. That's where the anime just makes it look fun to be violent. Like, it's not really the characters just being violent because they have to because the situation demands it but because it's just their way of life fighting is the primary solution to all their problems fairy tale would be an example of this they are constantly getting into fights even in their own guild just as friends an anime in the way of life category for violence would probably choose violence as their first way to solve all their problems and then only take a peaceful way out if if they have to now not all all level threes are created equal. Like the level three of sexuality, fan service, is way worse for an anime to have than way of life for violence. They're almost not even comparable. But I'm not on this side yet because I did figure out how to do brutality. So level one, we have Looney Tunes level violence, where nobody really gets hurt. You could drop an anvil on their head and they'll be fine. I can't really think of too many animes that actually fit that category though, and even the ones that do will still move into the second category pretty soon. It will never be completely Looney Tunes. If there's violence, it will 
usually be it will move up to level two i've never seen an anime that's if it has violence it's only in looney tunes i just don't know that anime maybe pokemon that probably counts but i won't i won't know unless i review pokemon and i don't plan to ever review that anyway level two is people don't die things are violent but the characters in general seem safe at least to some extent like fairy tale is a perfect example it just feels like an anime where nobody dies most of the time that's true technically some characters died, but you it really doesn't feel like it. So it's pretty safe feeling. And then the third level of brutality is nobody's safe. People will die. Or at the very least, it feels like they could die. Attack on Titan is an obvious example of this, where people die all the time. So then we have physical gore. Level one is either blood or dismemberment, and it's not any amount of blood. A nosebleed is not gonna count as physical gore. So the amount of blood might be a little subjective. I don't know how to decide how much blood is enough to count as gory, but blood or dismemberment. Level two would be blood and dismemberment. Pretty self-explanatory. And then level three, disembowel and or decapitation. And then we have psychological gore. Psychological gore is a very special type of gore where less is more. And I actually have a great example of this from Attack on Titan. see there was no blood no dismemberment or decapitation or anything but it is undoubtedly just as gory as anything else without showing any gore and in fact when i first watched that scene i i'd remembered it being blurrier than it was but when i went back to watch it for this video and i paused it during that moment i realized it was a it was a lot more detailed than i thought but still not bloody or anything and if it had actually shown the wind up and shown him in the process of dying instead of just showing him after he was dead it would have lost a lot of its punch. So I actually think psychological gore is a pretty good thing, but but it is a real thing, and put it here so you can be informed when it comes to it. By the way, I randomly highlighted some of these just to show that I will be highlighting them when I review animes. Now, moving on to sexuality. Uh, level one is sexy but not sexualized. Uh, this is basically immodesty. If the woman's just dressed in a bikini or something or dre dressed in any obvious sexy way but it's not it doesn't give you the feeling that it's purposely sexualized they're just they're just immodest but not trying to evoke a reaction level two obviously is purposely sexualized this one feels like it'll be the most common or at least it's a lot more common than it used to be perhaps pretty much any anime with etchy humor is gonna work in this category uh plunderer I guess would be a good one to put in that category. Fan service is uh, a little more... There's a thin line between purposefully sexualized and fan service, and I might not always be able to tell the difference. And I'm pretty sure I would put fairy tale in the fan service category because without showing nudity i don't know well you probably could be more sexualized but actually no you definitely could be more sexualized but fairy tale is up there i think it's safe to put it in the fan service category nudity level one is just a one-off or infrequent examples of this would be ronma one half and what was it project echo they both have literally one scene with nudity in it that as far as i can remember so it's not a regular thing which would make it level two regular nudity what uh i'm actually not sure of any good anime is with regular nudity unless i want to stretch the meaning of regular to include uh not just the amount of time nudity happens but the degree to which it happens i suppose Ixir one would categorize as regular for the amount of time the anime is actually on it's a short anime uh explicit i do not know of any anime that fits this category i just have it here just 
just in case. Hentai would obviously categorize that. Explicit, I would only use for uh, genitalia. And, and even then, they'd have to be adults. Because there are times when they'll have a little boy and he'll just be naked. But that just feels like unsexualized nudity, which doesn't feel like it counts. Like, if I ever thought that some little boy was being sexualized with his nudity, I might mark it as explicit. But in the, like, two examples I can think of, it's never felt like that. So then we go on to homosexuality. Level one is done in joking, jokingly. Like, uh, like someone of the same sex, uh, hits on the main character and the main character, or a main character, and the character is disgusted by it and runs away. That tends to happen sometimes. Level two is serious, but in the background. Like, they treat homosexuality like it's not wrong. People may not be disgusted by it, but they're not actively promoting it in a way that's with the relationship, like the number three. Uh, it's a good example of this. Oh yeah, a good example of serious but in the background is from Akame Gakyo. One of the characters is gay, but he's in no relationship and he later dies. Spoiler alert. So it's not really in your face about it or distracting in any way. It's a lot easier to ignore. And then the serious with relationship, Back on Titan comes close to getting to that one, but then one of the characters die. And then transsexualism. Level one is just feminine men or masculine women, or both. Feminine men would be a lot more common than masculine women. Uh, but oddly enough, masculine women are easier to remember. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood has an example of a masculine woman, so does Hunter x Hunter. But here's the thing about Japanese anime. Japanese are a lot better at balancing out their wokeness. So they will constantly have strong women, but they will, at least 90% of the time, will still be feminine, no matter how strong they are. So they us it's usually pretty easy for them to avoid the masculine women part. Feminine men, not so much. But it's also harder to think of a good example of a feminine man in an anime without going full cross-dressing. And that's usually because the feminine men are usually in the back background of probably not even a named character. Except, as I was thinking, My Hero Academia has one with the, uh, I don't remember his name, but he's got the naval laser. He is French and pretty feminine. Now, cross-dressing, I have two good examples of that. One in Naruto. I think his name is Haku, maybe? And when Naruto finds out that he's a guy, he's surprised and says he's cuter than Sakura. And ReZero has... Felix, a man who dresses like a cat lady. But notice something specific with both these examples. And again, this goes back to Japanese being much more balanced with their wokeness. And this might just have to do with them being anime. They are clearly defined as men who just look like women. You won't find them complaining that the main character is using the wrong pronouns. Men are still men even if they're dressed as women, and women are still women even if they have huge muscles that no woman should have. And level three is ideology, another one that I'm not not sure will ever come up. The closest it ever comes up is in One Piece, with a character whose name I forget, but he has the devil fruit ability to inject hormones into people and change them from male to female or from female to male. Of course, he never actually changes a female to a male. He only changes men to women, and he constantly changes himself back and forth between the two. So this is as close as it gets to, uh, to promoting transsexualism. But the anime itself softens this blow by having Sanji being the one who is set on this island of cross-dressing men for two years. And Sanji is rightly disgusted with the whole prospect. Except, unfortunately, whenever the guy changes himself into a woman, Sanji is confused. But, and that's dumb. He really shouldn't be confused. But other than that, he is a voice of reason, preventing the anime from going into the realm of ideology. Level 3 transsexualism, which 
So it's a good thing Sanji was the one trapped on the island and not Frankie. Who knows how Frankie would have reacted. And down here we have bestiality. I don't know of any, I don't really know of any anime that would go full yes on bestiality. I know the one anime, uh, what was it? Kimono Michi Rise Up. That one I would mark as a maybe, but even then I couldn't go full yes. And that is the only anime that I can think of that would fit this. So then we move to incest and pedophilia. Incest, I really only have one example for the yes category, and that's a secret. We'll get to that eventually. The maybe category, ah, like, if, if you think, uh cousins being or attempting to be intimate is counts as incest then i guess sword art online would count for that so i'd probably put sword art online in the maybe category but most animes i'm are not gonna have this issue pedophilia that's a lot trickier animes are notorious at making young people look old and old people look young rising of the shield hero uh, is probably a good example with the spear hero being obviously a pedophile the question is, would I mark that as a maybe or a yes? Because the spear hero is not the main character and he's not exactly liked. Like, his obvious pedophilia is just another reason not to like the guy. So it sort of fits with his character. I don't want to mark it yes just because it has a pedophile. I want to mark it yes if it encourages pedophilia or promotes it or has a really soft view on it. Something like that. Now back to this side, we have the Today of 520 trope. If you watched my video on the worst trope in anime, I've decided to make that a category. Level 1, main character is a demon, or half demon, or whatever. And again, like I said in that video, this is the most forgivable. I can, I don't know of any anime where this is a bad thing. But I have it here just in case, because some people out there are very legalistic, and I want them to be making an informed decision. Level 2 is evil church. There's a church that's betrayed as evil, which really is most animes that even have a church will probably fit in this category and then level three is they're just switching bad for good and good for bad straight up witchcraft that one definitely needs explaining i am not so legalistic that i'm just going to disparage any anime with any sort of magic for instance fairy tale has magic but it's not treated as magic in a way that should be disparaged. It's, it's treated more like superpowers, as, as if everybody has their own superpower, and they just call it magic. So that is not the kind of magic I mean when I talk about witchcraft. To earn a place in the witchcraft category, it has to, level one is either a ritual or incantation. Example of ritual would be Full Metal Alchemist, because they are always they draw the circles that spell circles. I forgot what the actual name is, but they're circles, and it's an obvious ritual type thing to produce this effect, which they don't call magic, but it is obviously magic. And then incantation, a good example is bleach. In bleach, the Kidos could be either, all the Kidos have an incantation, but you can shorten the incantation to just saying the name, which is really no different than just saying the name of an attack, as any other anime would do. But because there is a full incantation, for example... Ruler, mask of flesh and blood, all things in the universe fly! That which names all in nature, gathering of heat and war. Beyond the seas in reverse, take steps to the south. Auto 33! Shaka Red Flame Cannon! As I'm reading that, I'm realizing how little that made sense. That was just a random assortment of words. But that's the incantation they use for Shakaho. Or auto number 31, Shakaho. And that most definitely counts as incantation. Level 2 would be ritual and incantation. That seems pretty self-explanatory. And the last one is what's the source? I will mark this one if the source of the magic is something evil. Evil. Like in Slayers, where the main character uses black magic, and all black magic uh, is basically the result of petitioning a demon lord, a specific demon lord, for his power. Most animes will have a more abstract nature to the magic. Like, it's just an energy that's 
out there that you tap into. Or maybe it's an energy that's inside of you. Most animes will not say it's something you get from demons. So I don't know how often I will use this one. And lastly, we have language. I have separated it into three categories and I am not reading them. Th this, this again is pretty self-explanatory. The only one I will read is using the name of Jesus as an expletive is obviously in the third category. And then I have crass usage. I don't know of any examples of that specifically, except, well, not, not examples from an anime, but but that one Rationality Rules video where he said the ontological argument was philosophical masturbation. That would count as crass usage. And also, most of the animes I watch would at most be level one. In fact, I don't actually know of any anime that fits level three except uh, Afro Samurai for obvious reasons. I especially don't know of any anime that would actually use the name of Jesus as an expletive. But I have it there just in case, in case it ever happens. And when I do go over animes, I will actually have the unused sections blacked out so I don't have to show them on screen because I do not allow that foul language on my channel so it seems a bit hypocritical to be if I would be showing them all the time. All right that is how I will be reviewing animes from here on and I will have my first review out shortly. See you then.